Welcome back to Open Line. It is Ask the Attorney. We have with us Kevin Kennedy. He's taking your calls. This is a chance for you to call in with some legal question. He'll give you basically free advice. So this is a good opportunity. Let's go with Richard on line one. Hello, Richard. How are you? Great, Richard. Go ahead. I've got a uh, issue with Metro right now. Um, I've been hit with a code violation for not maintaining a piece of grass and piece of yard that is not on my knee. Okay. That, well, again, I would be advancing. I take that little deed. I take my survey that the county provides, take some photos, and I'd go in there and say, y'all have charged me with property that I don't own. And uh, I try to go down and talk to building codes and say, I don't own it. Can you show me any way that I do own that? And uh, try to negotiate. And if you can't get anywhere, hire your lawyer and let him advance. Uh, those kinds of things do come up, and uh, that's when you really need a lawyer. And that, yeah, that, that kind of thing happens. All right, let's thank you, Richard. Now, does that answer your question, Richard? Does that take care of it? Well, I mean, they're, they're trying to say by the tax assessment map is that, that that's what their basis of my ownership is, not, not by the legal deed. Okay, well, you've got a great argument. So you just take that. The down. legal deed is what counts. Right, let's go to Keisha. Is that right? Did I say your name right, Keisha? Yes, you said my name right. Good. All right, go right ahead. Um, hi, yes. I, hello? Yes, go ahead, Keisha. Oh, yes, I was just, um, I, I've been through a divorce recently, and and um, we have um, equal parental rights, and I work for the federal government. I'm looking for a, a job promotion, but my ex-husband says he's going to fight me and say that my son can't move anywhere with me out of the state of Tennessee. All right, and we would anticipate him saying that. And so uh, we have laws in Tennessee that if you get a promotion and it's an advancement for you and the child, if you have primary residential care, that's what everyone should try to pursue so that they have primary residential care, you send them a notice in 60 days, explain what you're doing, where you're going and why. They have 30 days to object. And if they don't object, you move on. If he does object, then you go to the court and you say this is in the the child's best interest and why, and he's going to say his argument in the court is probably going to allow you to move. Wow. Primary um, residential. Yes. Primary residential. If, they, if it's a divided or split residential. If it was joint, joint then, yeah. then again, your, your fight is harder. So I'd get me a harder fighting lawyer. <laughs> and I'd have a good reason, and uh, the lawyer will help develop that for you. How tough are those cases? Well, they're tough, and I fight them on a regular basis. The whole law firm, we have them all the time. Divorce is real. People have to move is real, and so we fight that every day. And the children, it's really the most important thing in your life, the truth is, and so uh, we take it serious. It is serious. Let's go to Janet. Hello, Janet. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Yes, I'm calling on behalf. I was an I'm blind, disabled. I was in a hospital. What kind of legal advice would I get? Uh, I was in there in ICU. Uh, I got fed about five days. They didn't set up my meals. I laid in urine for about a day and a half totally. Uh, I just had real bad service, and I have contacted the officials there, and they haven't got back in touch with me. Yes. Well, again, I would try to get my medical records. I would try to get my witnesses who could support these uh, positions where you are and then hunt you down a lawyer to pursue it because you know what you've described is a deviation from the standard of care. Right. Okay. It's All a right. Claim. So when someone comes to you, yes, you want them they go they go hunting for a lawyer right you want them to have some information together right absolutely and the better that you are prepared the better your lawyer is prepared and that goes across the line from a criminal case to a bankruptcy case to a divorce preparation everybody said kevin you want all those jury trials 11 jury trials in a row and they said how did you do it well i was doing a lot of praying and a lot of preparation mm -hmm. preparation 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 uh, Sherry, which line is Sherry on? Courtney, do you know? Is she online? Is this you, Sherry? No. How about that? Is that you, Sherry? Patricia. Okay, let's go to Patricia. Hello, Patricia. Hello. Go right ahead. Yeah, uh, my, my two 
kids that hasn't paid child support in 10 years, they won't do anything about it. And he was in another county, and they will not go down there to pick, pick him up. They already said there's a want for him, but they don't know where he is. Okay. Well, child support is something that continues on. The state of Tennessee has to try to collect that child support. It's their obligation. If there is a valid court order, that thing just keeps running. And so one day he'll get pulled over and they may have a capius out to have him arrested. And a lot of times they'll issue it, have him arrested. And he will have to stay in jail until he appears in front of the judge. And then the judge is going to say, well, do you have the money, you have ability to pay? And they'll work it out from there. How tough are those cases? Well, I hear that all the time. You know, this person has not paid their child support. Deadbeat dads, if you go to court tomorrow, you, there's going to be a courtroom full of people. Say, so, hey, I don't have a job. I don't have ability to pay. Well, that's a good question. But everybody has some means of trying to prove to the court that I'm not doing anything. And if they don't prove it, they will go to jail. So there, you, you can fight those. I mean, oh, yeah, we fight them all the time, every day. You can day. try and get that money. Yes. And you know what happens so much of the time, that it'll lay around for a long time, and then all of a sudden, this guy gets a Social Security disability approval, and they're going to back pay him. He thinks he's going to get all this money in back pay, but the state of Tennessee has already placed a lien. So when the money is paid out, it goes to the state, and the state pays that woman who's been behind for years. Let's go to Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Hello. Hi. Go right ahead. Uh, this is in regards to a songwriter's uh, uh, settlement. Okay. From the United States District Court for the Southern District of New York, Eric versus Spotify USA. Uh, and I'm a songwriter, and I've got several songs. Uh, copyrighted with the Bureau of Copyright in Washington, D.C. Right. It says, you received this postcard because you have been identified as a potential owner of a registered copyright in one or more musical compositions. The plaintiffs in the class action lawsuit allege that this company made certain, made certain musical compositions with registered copyrights or applications for registration available for interactive streaming and or limited downloading without a license. Okay. They allege that this conduct violated federal copyright law and this company denies the wrongdoing or liability and denies the allegation. A settlement in the class action has been reached under the proposed settlement. You may be entitled to uh, for payment and other benefits. All right, well, let's talk about that. Well, Does basically, that give you enough information? Yeah, then? What, what you've got in our class action, some lawyers in New York have brought that. They've reached a settlement, and they've identified her as a potential beneficiary. And so it's been court approved that X amount of dollars uh, will be sent to you, and that's basically where you are. Uh, you could always say, I'm not going to accept this and bring my own lawsuit. Uh, well, then where do you get the resources to fight a company? Try to talk to the lawyer, see what the deal is, and this could be a windfall to you that you hadn't even anticipated. Is it? Could it be a windfall? Is sure. it normally just a few dollars? Well, it's gray areas. We've seen everything across the board. You see a lot where you get $6. You see a lot where you get $12. <laughs> but we have seen some substantial ones over the years, too. Okay, let's go to uh, Lois. Hello, Lois. Louise, sorry, Louise. Are you there, Louise? Yes, I'm here. Go right ahead. Okay, uh, about 10 years ago, uh, I had my will made out. Yes. Uh, and so recently, I mean, uh, I've got to have it changed. It was made out to my son. He was uh, my only living relative. Well, he has passed since. I'm sorry. He was to go to his daughters. Uh, I did not list their names on the will. But yes, ma'am. was put in there that, you know, that's who would get the next of kin. That's some gray areas. If I were you, I would go have an updated will to keep down any misunderstanding that might arise. And so uh, you're still talking to us uh, very intelligently and competently. And if I had any family members that might contest a will, the best way to solve it is to go in and do a new one now that your son passed away. And we're so sorry to hear that. Um, a lot of good information tonight. All Excellent. Right. Um, a lot of good callers. We're going to take a break, then we'll come back, we'll wrap everything up, give you some more information, wrap everything up, take a break, be back right after this.